The conservatives are never going to win if they accept left-wing premises on contentious issues. We saw a standoff last week in the House of Commons Justice Committee, a committee that's studying online hate. Michael Cooper, a conservative member of parliament, was speaking out in response to a claim made by a witness on that committee. The witness, Faisal Khan Suri, from the Alberta Muslim Public Affairs Committee, made an asinine statement as he was discussing the power of online hate. He said that violent acts can be linked to conservative commentators. This is the quote that's in question here. Online hate influences real-life hate. Uh, to be quite blunt about this, online hate is an actually enabler, a precursor, uh, and a decontributor to not just real-life hate, uh, but to murder. I think we've seen a lot of um, recent tragedies that have been happening across the world. Uh, in January 2017, in Quebec City, mosque killer Alexandre Bissonnette gunned down six Muslim men in execution style, where he came into the mosque with two guns and fired more than 800 rounds. The evidence from Bissonnette's computer showed he repeatedly sought content about anti-immigrant, alt-right, and conservative commentators, mass murderers, U.S. President Donald Trump, and about the arrival of Muslims, immigrants within Quebec. In October 2018, uh, white nationalist Robert Bowers murdered 11 people and injured seven more at the shooting inside the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, an attack again that was, appears to be, have been motivated by anti-Semitism, uh, inspired by his extensive involvement in white supremacy and alt-right uh, online networks. In March 2019, a lone gunman armed with semi-automatic uh, automatic weapons burst into the mosque in Christchurch, New Zealand. <clears throat> This white nationalist, which was a gruesome terrorist attack, was broadcasted live on Facebook and Twitter, and 51 worshippers were killed. So what Mr. Consuri is saying here is that we can link rhetoric from Donald Trump and alt-right and conservative commentators to horrific violent attacks that conservatives, among many other people, deplore and condemn. And what Michael Cooper said in response is that such a claim is defamatory, that trying to tarnish conservatism and conservatives with a brush of violence is wrong. And to illustrate his point, he actually quoted from the Christchurch Killers Manifesto, which unabashedly disavowed conservatism. This is what Michael Cooper said in that committee meeting. I take great umbrage with your defamatory comments to try to link conservatism with violent and extremist attacks. They have no foundation, they're defamatory, and they diminish your credibility as a witness. And let me, Mr. Chair, read into the record uh, the statement of Brenton Tarrant, who is responsible for the Christchurch massacre. He left a 74-page manifesto in which he stated, conservatism is corporatism in disguise, I want no part of it. The nation with the closest political and social values to my own is the People's Republic of China, close quote. And I certainly wouldn't attempt to link Bernie Sanders to the individual who shot up Republican members of Congress and nearly fatally killed uh, Congressman Scalise. So you should be ashamed. So yes, he did read from the manifesto of a killer, but he did it to disprove a disparaging claim that was made by a witness, a very inflammatory claim that's been made by the witness. But instead of taking this and looking at it factually, the media jumped on Michael Cooper. The media accused him of racism, of Islamophobia, of quoting in some sense of the manifesto to support it. And what happened from there was Andrew Scheer, the conservative leader, decided to kick Michael Cooper off the Justice Committee. Now, this is a profound capitulation to the left, and there are a couple of problems. Number one, Michael Cooper has been an effective operator on that committee, not just throughout its study on online hate, but also when he was grilling and holding to account Gerald Butts, when he was helping get to the truth of the matter with regards to Jody Wilson-Raybould, Cooper has been a stalwart defender of the rule of law on that Justice Committee. And what happens is that Andrew Scheer decides to try to make friends with the left and try to make friends with the media, kicks Cooper off of the committee with just a couple of months to go until the election and only a couple of weeks to go until the House of Commons rises for the summer. And does it work? No.
People are still calling for Cooper to be ejected from not just the committee, but from caucus itself. This is what the witness in question said, Faisal Khan Suri, that Michael Cooper shouldn't even have a role within the Conservative caucus for what he did. This is in spite of Andrew Scheer saying that he's talked to him and considers the matter concluded, in spite of a direct apology from Michael Cooper for saying that Faisal should be ashamed of making the claim he did about Conservatives. But this is a very cowardly decision by Andrew Scheer. It's ineffectual. He's tried to tell people that, oh, no, no, we're not Islamophobes, we're not bigots, but the people that are making those claims are not discouraged from making those claims even further. Conservatives are never going to win when they accept what the left is saying at face value and take out these battles on their terms and their turf. This is what's happened with Andrew Scheer's address at the Yellow Vest rally and to the United We Roll convoy demonstrators. He's constantly on defense, constantly saying, I'm not a racist, I'm not a racist, I'm not an Islamophobe. But let's face it, the left is never going to get off that way of thinking. If Andrew Scheer wants to be a leader and a conservative leader at that, he needs to stop giving in. When you throw one of your own MPs under the bus for saying what anyone should view as a defense of conservatism, you are not a leader. For True North, I'm Andrew Lawton.